how are ovarian cysts different from fibroids? These two conditions commonly affect women and they could have some similar symptoms, but are they related? So watch this video to the end if you want to find out some key differences between fibroids and ovarian cysts. Hi there, I'm Dr. Sylvia. I'm a general practitioner, author, and the founder of Ask Away Health, where we provide you with direction and clarity on everything medical. Subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so that every time we publish a new video, which is on Saturdays every week, you'll be the first to find out about it. So both of these conditions cause a woman to have abdominal or pelvic pain. They can also cause a huge amount of swelling that can make a woman look as if she's seven or eight months pregnant. But do they have anything else in common? So let's go through the different factors associated with fibroids and compare them to ovarian cysts. But first, let's look at ovarian cysts. Now, a cyst is a sac or bag-like cavity or opening or space anywhere in the body. Commonly, it can happen under the skin or in bone. You can have cysts forming in different organs, in the breasts or even in the penis. In this video, we're talking about ovarian cysts, which are cysts that are formed inside the ovary. The two ovaries are part of a woman's reproductive organs and their primary responsibility is the production of hormones that make up part of the reproductive cycle in every woman. Each month, an egg is released from follicles in the ovary. So during the woman's cycle getting up to this point, many follicles in each of the ovaries are getting ready for this whole process of releasing an egg. But at the end of the day, only one of them will actually be so it is thought that some ovarian cysts are sacs filled with fluid which are formed from follicles which have failed to produce a mature egg. Although I think it's important to say that there are many forms of ovarian cysts and they are thought to have different origins and not just from the follicles that have not produced an egg on that particular part of the menstrual cycle. We'll be looking at those type of cysts and much more about the ovaries in our upcoming series on the ovaries and what they get up to. Now we know that most ovarian cysts are quite small and they eventually go away by themselves without any disruption. But some of them can grow to be very big and can cause significant symptoms and can be very disruptive. So that is when they become an issue, when they cause symptoms, for example, pain, or because they've grown so large, they're pressing on other parts of the or other organs within other parts of the pelvis and abdomen. For example, they could be pressing against, they could grow so large, they could press against the bowels and cause constipation, or even press against the bladder and cause problems with passing urine called uh, urinary retention. Another possibility is that the ovaries continue to grow large, they could possibly twist around themselves, a condition called ovarian torsion, which is quite serious or over the um, ovarian cyst could grow and grow so large till it bursts or ruptures which could also cause significant medical illness. Other types of cysts could happen so for example when there is a collection of several small cysts within an ovary this is known as polycystic ovarian syndrome and can be associated with irregular menstrual periods and infertility depending on the degree to which it occurs. Therefore ovarian cysts should be monitored if they are going bigger, the appropriate thing to do is to have them removed and then tested to check whether they are the type that have become cancerous. So that's a little bit about ovarian cysts. How does this all relate to fibroids? Well, luckily, we have a fantastic fibroid playlist series. So if you want to learn all about fibroids and different things to do with fibroids, what they are, how they're treated, possible options, please click the link in the description below. Check out this video because we've talked a whole lot about fibroids and I think you'll find it quite helpful. As a quick reminder on here, fibroids are benign growths of the womb in a woman and they occur quite frequently as well. So let's start looking at comparisons. Number one, you've probably picked up from my last comment. Yes, fibroids develop from the womb and ovarian cysts develop from the ovary. Okay, number two, we know fibroids are common. We say that up to 30 to 40 percent or even more of women develop fibroids in their lifetime. Ovarian cysts are even more common. Ovarian cysts happen frequently in women who have regular periods. In fact, it is thought that most women who have a regular periods produce one follicular type cyst every month. 
and 8% of these uh, women before menopause uh, could have cysts that would go as large enough as to require treatment. I've referred to this before already. They can cause quite similar symptoms, apart from causing pain in the pelvis or the abdomen, causing swelling of the pelvis or the abdomen, causing problems and blocking other organs because of their size. They can also be associated with low back pain and some cysts like fibroids and the polycystic ovarian um, syndrome, like fibroids, could also be associated with infertility. Just like fibroids, most ovarian cysts are benign. In fact, many women just go through everyday lives and go through years and years without even realizing that they have an ovarian cyst, just like in some cases of fibroids. Uncommonly, um, if an ovarian cyst could change into a cancerous type, this hardly happens with fibroids because we know that fibroids are benign tumors that very, very rarely become malignant. So fibroids and ovarian cysts can present quite similarly and therefore the way that the doctor will be able to make a difference is not really by just examining the woman's pelvis or abdomen. It's usually by carrying out a procedure called an ultrasound scan which identifies whether this particular swelling or problem um, is coming from the womb or coming from the ovaries. In terms of cause, we're not really clear on how fibroids happen. We have an idea about some associations with the development of fibroids. And if you check out this video here, I talk a lot more about fibroids um, and, how they, and how they're formed. But the thing with ovarian cysts is that we know how some of them might develop, but there are others that we don't have an idea why they develop. One of the things that we're quite certain about is that both fibroids and ovarian cysts can be influenced by hormones. So women who suffer from um, frequent ovarian cysts may actually experience relief from using contraceptive pills, which stop them ovulating and reduces the risk of cysts being formed. Fibroids can also be affected by hormones. Okay, here's a good place to pause and just check in with you guys. Do you think ovarian cysts could have some relation to lifestyle choices that people make? For example, if one eats a particular diet, if one is overweight, or if one smokes or takes alcohol, would any of those things be related to developing ovarian cysts? Share with me what you think in the, in the comments. When we talk about treatment of um, fibroids and ovarian cysts, there are some similarities. For large cysts that you actually want to do something about or you need to do something about, the treatment is usually surgery, in which case it might be a laparoscopy um, or abdominal surgery to actually remove very large cysts. And that's similar to what might happen with treating fibroids with a surgical option. Now we've talked a little bit about this earlier, but there are emergency symptoms in which fibroids and ovarian cysts can mimic each other. Now with ovarian cysts, We've said they could burst or rupture, and this can happen quite suddenly and be the reason for an emergency trip to the, um, to the hospital at some time during the day or late at night. So what could happen is there might be very severe pain in the pelvis, in the lower abdomen area, or in the whole of the abdomen, that might be associated with vomiting. There might be difficulty breathing or hyperventilating, sudden severe abdominal pain, or in some cases there might be unexplained heavy vaginal pain. So all these are of course reasons that could make someone present to the emergency room because of the sudden development of the symptoms. On the other hand, with fibroids, there is a condition called red degeneration of the fibroid that might happen because a fibroid has grown and, and grown and actually outgrown its blood supply. It can happen in women who are pregnant, but the main feature is that it, it involves severe abdominal or pelvic pain, which might be um, so bad that the woman has to attend the emergency room for treatment. What about pregnancy? What happens with ovarian cysts or fibroids when a woman is pregnant? Now we know that most women with some small fibroids go on to have a normal pregnancy. Okay, But in some cases, the hormones of pregnancy can influence the fibroids to grow. If this is going to happen, it's more likely to happen during the first trimester. During the second and third trimester, the other problems that could actually develop include the development of pain. We just talked about red degeneration of the fibroid because uh, the, the, the womb and the fibroids are getting bigger and the fibroid now outgrows its blood supply. But the other problem that could happen is a condition called placental abruption. And that's where the placenta abruptly tears away from um, the womb 
itself can cause serious problems for both mom and baby and there's a higher risk of that happening if the woman has fibroids. The other possibility that could happen is the preterm labor. So for example, um, a woman who has fibroids may be at a higher risk to go into labor before 37 weeks simply because of the fibroids. And then what about during labor and delivery? The presence of a large fibroid could cause an obstruction um, in, within the womb and so lengthen or prolong um, labor itself. And so there's more likely or a higher chance of such labor and de um, delivery ending in a cesarean section simply because the fibroid is, loca is located in the part of the womb where it's impeding the delivery or ability of the baby to come through the birth canal. And after pregnancy, most fibroids tend to shrink. On the other hand, ovarian cysts don't cause as much problem. A woman with an ovarian cyst can go ahead to have a normal pregnancy and delivery normal labor outcomes. In some cases though, because of the hormones associated with pregnancy, they may grow large and they may get they may a burst or rupture like we've described already, causing problems with the pregnancy. And don't forget the other types of ovarian cysts like polycystic ovarian syndrome or even um, endometriotic cysts which are cysts associated with endometriosis and which we've considered in, in another video. These type of cysts could affect the chance for a woman to get pregnant so it's important to have that in mind in terms of how ovarian cysts could affect pregnancy. And lastly let's talk about the risk of cancer. We've said it over and over again fibroids are benign growths of the womb. Hardly do they become cancerous on the other hand, ovarian cysts arise from the ovary. They can sometimes become cancerous. This is more likely to happen in a woman who is postmenopausal, that is, she has stopped seeing her periods. And of course, ovarian cancer is more likely to happen in women who are older compared to, to women who are younger. Well, that is the case. In any woman with an ovarian cyst, whatever age, it is important for the cyst to be monitored and treated appropriately. Okay. So it's been a long video, longer than usual, but I think we've managed to look at some key differences or similarities between fibroids and ovarian cysts. Please watch out for our new playlist series coming up very soon called Your Ovaries and What They Get Up To, where we look at other aspects um, of the ovaries, other ovarian conditions, and try and shine a bit more light on how these spectacular organs work. Okay, we've talked about this um, um, comparison between fibroids and ovarian cysts. If you've got any questions um, on this topic, send us an email on info at askawayhealth.org. And as usual, I'd love to um, extend an invitation to you to join our community on Ask Away Health. I'm really grateful, I'm really grateful for so many people who have been joining so far. It's great to find that the community is growing bigger and bigger. And um, you can, you, you have access to our newsletters and our health blogs provide lots of useful health information through this and we give you an opportunity to suggest a video topic you want us to cover as well so please share this um, with friends share with family get people to engage so we can continue to grow a community of well-informed people about healthcare matters if you want to join the um, subscription link is down below it's www.askwayhealth.org just keep a look out for it in the descriptions so that's it for today thank you for spending part of your time with me if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, put uh, put something, put a comment in the descriptions below, say liked or helpful. I'm always happy to hear from you. Don't forget to share this with a friend or family member, somebody who you think will find it useful. Um, and subscribe, get, get friends to subscribe to the channel and help us grow because that really encourages us to make more and more videos like this, sharing useful health information. So until the next time I come your way, remain well and good and I will see you in the next one.